Well, today is a, a blessed day to be in the presence of the Lord. Welcome again to Voice Over the Nations. I am Apostle Dr. Eureka Stewart. And of course, I am delighted to be called to speak to you about these great messages coming directly from the Holy Ghost and Christ Jesus reaching you across the nation. So uh, please, there is a prayer during these messages, impartations by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm being led, and as I'm led, I perform. So then, invite somebody, share the messages, I hope you've been following us on media, on YouTube and Facebook. Um, we're faithful to get these messages to you wherever you are. Uh, the gospel itself is a mystery being revealed by those who believe in it, those who are actually living it and those who have lived it. It is truly more than what is actually visible. I'm careful not to say what is written, but what is not visible, what is hoped for, what is believed for is expressly laid into the gospel. Therefore, I continue to beseech you to connect with this great message of this great master, Jesus Christ. I believe uh, the last time we, we met, I spoke to you concerning uh, the reason for the cry for righteousness in our day. And I spoke to you about the devastating effects of unrighteousness, the deterioration of moral law and order, lawlessness and deceitfulness in Israel. Now, it, it was a great pain to one like Micah, and I spoke to you about Micah uh, from Micah chapter 7, and he spoke of some conditions that pretty much mirror those of our day. And again, uh, Isaiah waiting for the coming of the Spirit in Isaiah 33. Uh, something is going to happen to you. Something is going to happen. Those of you who are not able, this is a, an apostolic thing. This is what apostles do. As we are preaching, we are discerning. As we're preaching, we are in contact with the Holy Spirit. And some of you who uh, had... Uh, uh, Inabilities, let's say inabilities, not, not handicaps, but inabilities. The gospel has in it the power to rectify imperfections in your mental abilities, even so that you are able to retain the word of God, even if you were not able to uh, retain geography in your uh, school curriculum. I guarantee you, by impartation today, I implore you to pay attention because of also of uh, uh, being in contact with the healing power of Christ Jesus at all times. You may they call it a gift of healing, I'm able to impart to you, hallelujah, a magnificent transfer of healing power, and you will retain that which you have gained. And I want you to say, I will retain that which I have gained. I will no longer uh, be a victim of forgetfulness, mindlessness. I will not. And now, as you fix yourself in the Word and you fix yourself in Christ Jesus, hallelujah, by the power of the Holy Spirit, 
spirit, a, a kind of mental acuity or sharpness is going to take the place of that fogginess and dumbness. In the name of Jesus Christ, I commit you to the beautiful mind of the master through the light of the Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost. And I decree the clear clarity over your mind, instant recall, and uh, that you become in, in touch with the Holy Spirit who is able, uh, is able to help you to, to uh, uh, attend to, attain the power of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ promised himself as he was transfigured, as he was going home, he said that uh, he would send the Holy Ghost and that the Holy Ghost would not speak about himself, but he would speak about him, Christ Jesus. And so, so even if you were not able to retain natural things, you will retain spiritual things because you are a spiritual person, first and foremost. And so I give thanks for the, the, the attention to the Holy Spirit to the hearing of his voice, as I would hear, pray now an impartation of sharpness, quickness, that your, the depth of your understanding be open to the word of God. And so I'm gonna continue uh, speaking to you about the, the, the plan of righteousness, the, 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 the gift, the system of righteousness in Christ Jesus. You'll see that as I continue, righteousness bears fruit of its own. I remember when I spoke to you about, uh, I spoke to you uh, concerning wisdom. And I imparted the spirit of wisdom by the power of the Holy Spirit. And in time to come, you will receive the benefits and the effects of these gifts. We give God thanks for that. So now what's going to happen to you as you join me in this, this, this encounter with righteousness? That. The reason for it, the reason for Jesus imploring you not to become attached to the carnal system of things, but look toward righteousness, which cancels out on godliness. Now, you know, without a shadow of a doubt that you are yearning for, searching for, the spirit of righteousness. You may call it something else. You, 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 you want fairness. You want justice. You want peace. <laughs> but let, let, me, let me just, let me just put this another way. See unrighteousness for what it is. But do not glorify that in your society which comes to fix unrighteousness because unrighteousness should not exist in the first place. Well, what I'm saying is then, don't be so excited because your street has been fixed six times and you believe that you are being so well taken care of by those that fix the roads and you know you're getting all for your taxes and all of this. No, wait a minute. Have you considered that your road should have been fixed properly the first time? What you need to understand is that somebody somewhere is gaining from unrighteousness. Do not be deceived. Now, I'm not saying for you to take up and uh, 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 what is happening is that uh, folk have gotten enough of unrighteousness and they have begun to take things in their own hands. Do not do this. 
There is another way. We believers have found a way in Christ Jesus to attain peace and righteousness and hope in that righteousness. Now, in this chapter, in this, in this, in this program today, I'm going to perhaps change your definition, if you will, of what might have been uh, uh, your understanding of righteousness. I'm going to be looking at those who have attained the righteousness of Christ in themselves. Well, I'm saying that your definition of righteousness will change because you might have been a black and white type thinker. You might no gray matter, no nothing, no gray in the middle. Uh, 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 having a system of uh, crime and punishment, uh, you ought to pay for that because you did that. And if no one else makes you pay, I will. No, 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 wait a minute. That brings you into contention and could get you into trouble. And Christ Jesus is talking about peace. Now, so, so in Christ Jesus, the, the, the definition or the understanding of righteousness is totally different from that that is displayed in the natural order of society. As a matter of fact, you know that Jesus Christ came up against the system of unrighteousness displayed in the actions and the behavior of the, the ecclesiastical order, the scribes, the Pharisees, whom we all seem to know very well. But everything in Christ Jesus, everything in Christ Jesus has everything of the Father in it. So, righteousness being a spiritual uh, property, if you will, it is more than you think. Would you turn to somebody, even if you're not on live TV tonight, if you're on YouTube, tell somebody, if Jesus has said it, it's more than you think. It comes with it, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit moving through it to accomplish the thing that it has been sent to accomplish. So then if you receive today the Spirit of righteousness, hallelujah, then know that something profound is taking place, but not only taking place now, it will continue to take place. And I believe, I believe that even as Christ Jesus came to us to rectify constitutional and societal endemic, mean it was so and laid inside the society that the Father sent Christ Jesus to rectify it because it had permeated, seeped through, running through all layers of society. And that tells me then it was also generational. Now, I, I, I am beyond asking for forgiveness for passion. Uh, the gospel is, uh, should be uh, preached with passion. If I'm not able to sell you uh, passion, if I'm not able to, to speak passionately, but you would not engage. So uh, I, um, no, this is why I'm passionate about this. And I pray that it is uh, transferred to you. And so then, 
Huh. And through the work of the Holy Spirit, and then your eyes will be opened and something deep sight. Hallelujah. A, 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 an acknowledgement that something is moved out of the way. It's being pushed aside. You no longer have an inclination to do like you used to do. And so Jesus is What he's saying, uh, you may be able to do without your clothes. You may be able to do without your food. But truly, righteousness is indispensable. If you would gain access. If you would gain access to the kingdom of God. And so, uh, a short time ago, I, I thought I, I needed to share with you, through the eyes, I want to talk to you today about some of the things that the apostles uh, talked about, what they had attained what they had received as something almost without knowing when it happened. This is how an impartation is, but something that these men, the first fruit of the ministry of Christ Jesus, had received this transformation Hallelujah. And so many of you today, wherever you are, you will begin to know that there is a power that is working in you. And this seed today, I prophesy that this seed of righteousness will fall on good ground. And if you are willing, you can declare, I am that good ground. I'm sure that those that were standing around when Jesus talked about righteousness, they received firsthand the seed of righteousness. And so it will fall on good ground and will produce a bountiful harvest lasting a lifetime and perhaps will be handed down to your children through the Spirit. And so we'll be looking at this word. And um, now, <laughs> we'll begin with the Apostle Paul. And uh, perhaps if there's time, I will, I pray that I will look at the life-changing words of the Apostle Peter, this mature Apostle. Actually, what they are speaking about, the results and the fruits of righteousness, propel them and cause them to testify and say the things that they're saying. And so, the Apostle Paul and I speak to you now from Romans. In chapter 9 and verse 30, hallelujah, the Apostle Paul is talking about the present state of the, the conflicts experiencing in Israel, the conflicts. And you know that the old order never gives up without a fight. So there's a clashing. It's a clashing of systems. So Paul says in Romans chapter 9 and verse 30, 
what should we say then? He's, in his custom, he's putting forward a question for you and I, as he did in that day to the Romans. He's talking to the Romans, but he's talking to us as well. What should we say then? Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have obtained righteousness, namely the righteousness that comes from faith. Well, that is As you know, the writings of Paul are scholarly and profound. But speaking to the Romans, he said this, that there was a, a connection between faith and righteousness, which only happened in Christ Jesus. Now, and I'm going to the left of my Bible, over here, he's saying, yes, there was a system of righteousness, but there was no uh, uh, joining together of faith. Now, later on, as Paul speak to the Hebrews, those of you who are church goers and who've been in church, and even if you haven't, you will encounter what Paul is talking about, a righteousness that comes by faith. He will speak to you about that in Hebrews 11. And that is the chapter that the pastors usually affectionately refer to as the hall of faith. And so your definition of righteousness not being an absence of wrongdoing, it's not as easy as that. And these men have come to change the world. And so what they are dealing with has the power to change systems, change men, change women, change governments, overturn societies oh I, I i don't know i pray to god that i'm 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 getting your attention that something would overturn society something would take over the spirit of righteousness would be turned loose set free in your cities and in your towns in your town halls and in your halls of government your legislature your congress your parliament the spirit of righteousness as was detailed by the apostles i guarantee you that if we come together and if we were to pray understanding knowing deeply the will of God in this word that something will happen I am not even suggesting that it can't it will happen what oh what you need what Isaiah called the spirit coming down from heaven oh I feel a wind uh, excuse me, I feel the wind of the Spirit. There is no wind here, but I experience uh, the wind of the Spirit blowing across my face. I wish the wind would blow where you are. Hallelujah. So then, it lies within the power of righteousness through Christ Jesus. It lies within the power of righteousness to overturn the subtle systems of wrongdoing that we have forgotten what right standing looks like. We're just uh, pay another, uh, another lawyer, go to another doctor, do this, do that. No, wait a minute. I am saying to you, righteousness will awake. 
Righteousness will come alive. Righteousness will take on the form of a, a, of a, of a, a raging fire and go through your society, go through the schools, go through the systems. I'm telling you, it has the power to shift societal order layer by layer. Now, I just believe, you see, that I, 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 I'm anointed to, 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 to do this. Something happened, and uh, not too long ago, something happened in the west coast of Canada. And maybe I'll ask them how it happened. I, I, I divert one moment to tell you this. A group of pastors, Apostles maybe, prophets, I don't know all of the, the, the categories of uh, believers, but I do know that they are pastors. They have come together and they have formed an accord among them. I believe it's called the West Coast, uh, the uh, Christian uh, pastors or something. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a covenant group. Christian Accord, West Coast. This has happened in Canada. Pastors have come together and decide no more. We're, we're, we're the West Coast Christian Accord. Uh, uh, look that up on YouTube and uh, see if that is the correct title. But I was so passionate by it. I pray that the whole uh, North America, we are on a continent. And so that I pray that this, 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 this God-given sense of righteousness will now begin to flow from city to city, from town to town. And those that visit will take away something of this. It is a great effort, a great initiative. The Lord bless you, pastors. And so now, in Jesus' name, I, I, I'm going to continue to talk about this spirit, this spirit of righteousness. And um, I, I have some more things to say to you, but I, I believe I will uh, speak to you about them the next time we meet. Now, now here's the thing: uh, the, the just just accept this. Just accept this today. Just accept this. That that the righteousness is a power. Righteousness is unassailable. It's a wall of offense and defense. It will protect you. The shepherd in Psalm 23 leads you in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And God promised to do some things for the righteous that no other group of believers, no other category can claim the protection of God like those who are righteous. I ask you, I implore to you, see that you engage it. Now, I'm going to leave you for a few moments or, uh, you know, not too long. I'll be back uh, next week. But here's the thing. Please contact us. Our website, BethanyCovenantAlive.net. Visit us on YouTube. Connect with us. Our address is on the screen. I'll be telling you a little bit more of World Healing Day. It will happen somewhere in the world. See that you contact us. We're serious about healing. Get on the website and see the live and recent testimonies. And don't forget, we, we want you to partner with us. We want you to bless us as we are blessing you in some way. We, we love what is happening across the nations. We thank you for the word and thank you for the encouragement. And thank you for following us on Facebook. The Lord bless you today. I, I'm encouraged. I, I, I have been, I have been preached to, I have been raised up by a great pastor who once preached righteousness into my life for six weeks. 
Now, don't be afraid. I am not planning to preach six episodes on righteousness, but maybe in some way I will. The Lord bless you today. Increase in the works of Christ Jesus because everything about Christ Jesus is full of the Lord God himself and the Holy Ghost. I'll see you next time. In Jesus' name. Amen.